Your first, who would be your first civilian witness? Pat, Pat, Pat Look, what could I get? It's all in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you talk. It's good. Adams. <laughs> you know who mine is, really. Oh, that's it. Oh, he's testifying now? Can we have, can we see it a little? Yes. I just want to see it.
So you can watch your husband get his ass. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, that's true, too. Too much power. Yeah, I know, all right. And he drew, he drew a um, diagram of something, too? It seems like from the... Oh yeah. yeah, draw the X. What page is that? On page 23. 23. So, yeah. so this would be go back to the screen. So this would be where I think he marked it and then he corrected it earlier. He marked here first, right? No, I think he marked here and then it's here. Yeah, so. yeah where number here we go. Yeah, where the yeah, I was right there. Right the garbage okay, can this is right here. Right. So J A is where the garbage can right. was. That's okay. where he was taking gotcha. a leak. Ready on Coleman, Walker, and Robert? Yes. Serve on behalf of the people. Good morning, Your Honor. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Ashley Chacon on behalf of the people. Thank you. And thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Castle on behalf of Mr. Walker. Okay, thank you. And good morning, Mr. Walker. Good morning. 
Judge, good morning to you and your staff. Lillian Diallo on behalf of Lillian Roberts, who is present in front of me. Thank you, and good morning, Ms. Roberts. Good morning. Your Honor, good morning. Craig Daly on behalf of Mr. Coleman and both cases, Judge. Thank you, and good morning, Mr. Coleman. Good morning. Okay, are the people ready to proceed to examination? Yes, Judge, we'd ask the court to order a sequestration order for any witnesses, uh, with the exception of uh, Detective Richard Hauser from the police department. He's the officer in charge of the case. Okay, thank you. Any objection? No, Your Honor, we would join in that. Absolutely, Judge. Mr. Daly? I would join in the motion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The sequestration order is in place. The exception is granted for the officer in charge. If there are no other preliminary matters? There's one. Uh, I'd met with the, 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 the lawyers. We've agreed to stipulate to the admission of certain exhibits, which would be uh, some video evidence, and I'd like to state the exhibit numbers and what, those, that, what that evidence is now. You may do so. Exhibit 2 is going to be a still frame t of a video, camera 12, taken at Nino's Party Store at 11.33 p.m. and 54 seconds on uh, May 31st. Exhibit 4 is going to be surveillance video from a gas station at C Conant and Outer Drive. Exhibit 6 will be video from Nino's Party Store, camera number 6. Exhibit 7 will be camera 23 from Greektown Casino, exterior northeast at 4 a.m. Exhibit 8, a still photo taken at Nino's Party Store from camera 10. Exhibit 9, Greektown Casino, exterior camera 23 at 4.30 a.m. Exhibit 10, Nino's Party Store, camera 10. Exhibit 11, Nino's Party Store, camera 11. Exhibit 12, Nino's Party Store, camera 12. And Exhibit 13, a still shot of Nino's Party Store, the interior, at 11.22 p.m. in two seconds on May 31st. Okay, are those correct stipulations for purposes of examination only? They are, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, on behalf of Ms. Robert Schatz, for exam only. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Yes. Okay. Any other preliminary matters? No, Your Honor. Okay, please scan the courtroom at this time. Make sure that anyone that's going to testify on today or at a future proceeding that they have been excused from the courtroom. On behalf of the people, are there any individuals that need to be excused? No, everyone's in the hallway or the witness room, and Detective Howes is bringing in our first witness. It's going to be Mr. Adams. Thank you. Anyone that needs to be excused on behalf of any of the defendants? No, just but before we get started, there Wait, is... before your witness comes out... What? There's just an, uh, an issue of an investigative subpoena that was had in this particular matter uh, on witnesses getting ready to testify. So we would ask Your Honor to order that Ms. Roberts, uh, that the defense be allowed to have a copy of that so that we can know at least what we're um, dealing with when we examine him. And we can go over it very quickly. I know me and Brother Counsel Kessel, um, we went over the transcript just now once we found out that it existed. Okay, Ms. Serma? You'll provide a copy? Yeah, today I've given one copy, but I will provide all the investigative subpoenas upon request if they want to make it, ask the court to order that at this time. No order. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are we now ready to call the first witness? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're ready. Yeah. There's one other issue that was just brought to my attention. Can we approach on that? Please approach. Right here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. Be clear of where part of the truth comes from. Tell the truth. And nothing but the truth tells you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, sir. Could you tell us your full name, please? Javion Adams. Mr. Adams, how old are you today? 13. When did you turn 13? May 1st, 2003. Mr. Adams? May 1st. Mr. Adams, good morning. I am going to need you to speak very loudly and very clearly into that microphone. It's so important that I'm able to hear everything you're saying on today, okay? Yes. All right. Thank you. I did not hear his response. I had asked you when you turned 13. May 1st, 2003. May 1st of this year? Mm. Mr. Yes. Adams, it's going to take a while. You'll have to say yes or no. Yes. And you have to say it loud so the judge can hear you. All right. Okay? I want to ask you about May 31st. In the evening of May 31st of this year, did you go to a party store called Nino's Party Store in the city of Detroit? Yes. Do you remember what time of day you went there? Nope. Was it daytime, nighttime? Night. Who did you go with? Deontay. What's Deontay's last name? Mitchell. How old was Deontay? Thirteen. Was he related to you? Yes. How was Deontay Mitchell related to you? To Brother, cousin, uncle, cousin. 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 Okay. Uh, so you and your cousin Deontay Mitchell went to Nino's. What did you do there? We was waiting on somebody. Were you on foot? On bike. Were you both riding bikes? Yes. Did something happen, or did someone pull up and get out of a car there? Yes. You were pointing at someone. Who are you pointing at? Him right there. Your Honor, when the witness is pointing, he's saying him right there. He's pointing towards defendant number one, Gregory Walker. Is that the person that got out of a car? Yes. What, Tell what, me what color he's wearing, though. What is he wearing right now in the courtroom? Yellow. The only one of the defendants wearing yellow, Your Honor, for the record, is Mr. Walker. And I'll, I'll stipulate to that ID for exam, Judge. Okay, thank you. When you saw uh, Mr. Walker, was he in a car? Yes. Did he get out of the car? Yeah, he went to the back of the store to use the bathroom. Tell us about that. Can you see the place where he was going to use the bathroom Can, from where you were on your bike? No, I, I wasn't looking at him. He went behind the store. Then when he came back, he dropped some money. Where did he drop the money? On the on the side where he came from. Do you remember what time that was? No. Can we have exhibit 12, please? Uh, six. Six. Mr. Adams, can you see the, te- see the television screen just to the side of you? I'm going to turn it a little bit. I need to get mine. Judge, can you see it from the bench? I need to get my glasses. Sorry, we can't make a, we wish we had a little bit of a bigger TV. JVN, can you see the television from where you're sitting? Yes. Is that, what we're looking at in the screen, we're calling it Exhibit 6, is that familiar to you? Yes. Tell us what that is. What are we looking at? Where, is it a parking lot? Yes. Where's the parking lot? On the side of the store. Can you see yourself on the screen right now? No, I think I see my cousin though, right there. Sir, I can't understand what you're saying. I see my cousin, but I'm probably on the other side of him. Okay, your cousin's up in the upper left corner of the screen? Mm-hmm, yes. Say yes or no. Yes. Is he on a bicycle? Yes. We play exhibit six. You see yourself on the screen now? Yes. So this is Exhibit 6, and for the record, uh, the timestamp on the exhibit at this point. Eleven fourteen and 14 seconds in the p.m. on May 31st. So that was you just circling the parking lot in your bicycle? Yes. What were you and Deontay doing at the store while you were just riding your bikes in the parking lot? I was wait- we was waiting on somebody. Someone inside the store? Yes. Okay, can we play the video at this point again? Then that's him going to you going to the back. The person getting out of the car right now? Yes. Is who? That man right there. Again, pointing towards defendant number one, Mr. Walker.
Did he say anything when he walked right past the two of you right there? No. Did you or Deontay say anything to him? No. Now, he, we don't see him on screen. We see his shoulder there at the bottom. What was he doing as, as he walked off the bottom of the screen there? He went to use the bathroom. Right. We just saw a person's shoulder on the awning. He came. He came from using. He came from using the bathroom. Did you see him do anything after mm -hmm. he used the bathroom? No. Did Deontay say anything about what he saw? No. Okay. Then that's when he dropped the money. Who saw him drop the money? Both of us. And you're riding your bikes towards where the money was dropped? Yeah. What are you doing on the video right there? Picking it up. Did you stop the man and tell him we got your money? No. What did you do with the money? We spent it. Well, I spent it. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. You said spent it. You said spent it. Could you just speak up just a little bit? We, yeah, a little louder. So, Mr. Adams, write it. We can stop the, the video now. Right at that moment, was it you or Deontay that actually picked the money up off the ground? Deontay. Do you remember how much money it was? No. Do you remember what kind of bills it was? Were they small bills, big bills? It was about a 20s and some 10s. 20s and 10s? Can you give us an approximate? Of, I mean, was it $10? Was it $500? What, what was it? About 50. About 50? What, what did the two of you do with the money right then? We left. We left. Together or separately? Together. Then we sp s went separately. When you initially left the parking lot together, where did you go? I went on to the house. Then that's when he went to the store. You went to a house? Yes. How do you know that Deontay went to the store? Because I saw him. Was he still on his bike? Yes. Was he going back to Nino's party store? Yeah, I guess to get something from the store. Your Honor, I would object to the speculation. The same. Thank you. Did you see him riding his bike in any particular direction? Straight. Straight to where? The store. And where did you go as you were watching Deontay ride his bike straight to the store? To the house. What street was the house that you went to? Haverhill. Did you he, go did you go inside of that house? Yes. He went up Haverhill to the store. Deontay went up Haverhill to the yes. store and you went to a house on Haverhill? Yes. Did you go inside the house? Yes. Did you stay at that house on Haverhill? Yes, then I left. How long did you stay at the house on Haverhill? I don't know. Minutes or hours? Minutes. When you left that house, where did you go next? To my stepdad's house. What's his first and last name? Cedric Bell. When you went to your stepdad Cedric Bell's house, did you go inside of his house? No. I didn't know he was there. Where did you go? In the van. Because nobody was there. Now all the street lights was off on Harvey Hill, so I left. Mm -hmm. Then that's when I went back on Harvey Hill. Then that's my... Before we get into that, let me ask you something else about the van. When you got into the van, were you by yourself? You have to say out loud. You yes. To, and where was the van parked? In, a, in the driveway. The driveway of the house? Mm, yes. Was it in the front part of the driveway, up front of the house, or back behind the house? Behind the house. How long did you stay in that van? A oh, couple of minutes. Then I left. Then when I went back on Haverhill, then my uncle and my brother told me he had got put in the car. I'm just to hear say, please. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Mr. Thurman, I am really struggling to understand what your witness is saying. I really need to understand every word he's saying, but I can't keep asking him to speak loudly and to speak clearly. Mr. Evans, you and I have talked before, right? Yes. And I know that you can talk a little bit louder than you're doing right now. Can you just speak up and talk into the microphone? It's, you heard the judge, it's important that she hears the words that you're saying. Can you do that for me? Just raise your voice a little bit? Yes. When you were in the van, were you by yourself? Yes. Was the van in the driveway of the house? Yes. The front of the house or in the backyard? Back, like the side. Like the house then the side, the okay. car. From the time that you left your cousin Deontay and he rode his bike back on, uh, back towards Nino's until the time you got to that van, 
Did you ever see Deontay again? No. Have you seen Deontay since the moment he was riding his bike back towards Nino's? No. Did anyone ever confront you or try to get money back from you personally? No. Did anyone ever try to stop you on your bike or accuse you of taking any money? No. No. All right, thank you, Mr. Adams. Judge, I don't have any other questions for the witness. Okay, cross-examination, Mr. Kessler. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Adams, good morning. Good morning to you. All right, I'm going to ask you a couple questions, okay? And if there's a point where I ask something that's not clear, you don't understand, you just tell me, and I'll do a better job of asking it, okay? Yes. That, okay, you got to make sure you say yes and no. Now, Mr. Adams, you and Devante, you rode your bikes to the location that we saw in that video together, is that correct? Yes. All right. And when you arrived, you said you were waiting for some people, is that right? Yes. All right. Now, before you had gotten to that location, where had you been just previously? Um, I was a, we, me and him came from a friend, his name was Doodle. We came from his house. And he had gave us some money. Okay. And was that to get something from the party or from the store? No, we came there to wait on somebody. I'm sorry? We came there, we saw somebody in the store and we was waiting for him. You saw somebody in the store and you were waiting for them? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Him in the store. And Mr. Adams, before you had arrived at that location in the video, had you consumed any alcohol, any beer, any liquor, anything like that? No. Okay. Had you had any marijuana or anything like that? No. Okay. And when you arrive at the store, you and Deontay are there, and you see this black car pull up, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the person who gets out of that car, you said you identified as this gentleman sitting in front of me, correct? Yes. And when you see this person get out of the vehicle, are you paying any special attention to him? No. All right. I wasn't thinking nothing. I'm sorry? I wasn't thinking nothing. You weren't thinking nothing? Mm -mm. Is that a no? Yes. Thank you. And you just saw a person walking past you. You didn't pay any special attention to his face, his clothes, anything like that? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. You said that this person went into the store. Is that, I just want to make sure I'm correct. Did you say this person went into the store or no? No, he went to the back of the store to use the bathroom. I didn't see him go in the store. I saw it on the camera. Thank you. Did you actually see this person go, you said go to the bathroom. You mean urinating? Yes. Okay. Did you actually see this person urinating? No. Okay. So when you say that you, this person went around to go use the bathroom, you don't actually know why they were going to the location they were going. Is that fair? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now this person walked around the corner and then came back, is that correct? Yes. All right. And again, your focus, you said you saw some friends in the store you were waiting for, is that right? Yes. So are, can you see them from where you are in, uh, uh, I'm sorry, can you see them from where you are outside of the store? If I move over some, yeah. So, so while you're outside, were there moments when you saw the friends that you were waiting for? I saw them in the store. Okay. And your focus is on them, not on this random guy who just walked by you. Is that fair? Yeah. And when this person walks by you again, is that when you notice that they've dropped something? No. When he came, when he came from around, then that's when we got his attention. Then that's when he dropped it. Okay. And when you see this person drop something, can you tell that it's money at that point? Yes. Okay. And did you say hey, sir, you dropped something, anything like that? No. Okay. And would it be fair to say that when this person drops something that you think is money, you're focused on what this person's dropped, not the person who's coming towards you. Is that fair? Yes. And the person walks by you and gets into this vehicle. Is that right? Yes. And again, fair to say that even as the person walks by you, you're keyed in, you're focusing on the money that he's dropped, correct? Yes. All right, because you're thinking you see this money, you want to go get that money. Is that right? Yes. When you, you and Deontay go pick up the money, is that correct? Yes. Now, who actually picks up the money? Deontay. And when... He got to it first. I'm sorry? He got to it first. He got to it first, okay. When Mr. Surma asked you, he said, what happened to the money? You said, I spent it. Okay, did you end up with the money? 
No, not all of it. He had most of it. Deontay took most of it, but you took some as well, correct? Yes. Right. You and Deontay left that location, right? Yes. Right. And you said you went to a house on Haverhill, is that right? Yes. Right. So, and he went to Nino's party store, correct? Yeah. All right. Are those in the same direction? I'm sorry, Judge. Yeah. I'm sorry, Judge. I hadn't even noticed. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Okay. So, Mr. Adams, you said you went to the house on Haverhill, correct? Yes. All right. And when you leave that parking lot, okay, you and Devonta, you said you go in separate directions. Is that right? When we left the parking lot, we went straight down Buckingham. Then that's when we went down Frankfurt. Then that's when we split it up. You go down Buckingham. Yeah. How far do you go down Buckingham? To Frankfurt. How many how many blocks is that? One. And you get to Frankfurt and what direction do you go when you get to Frankfurt? Have you. Right. Which do you turn down left? Down have it left. Okay. Down have you. He went up. All right. So are you watching him as he gets to a location? Or right. are you just and let me ask that that was a bad question. When you're riding your bike towards Haverhill you're facing in a different direction from Deontay, is that correct? Yeah. All right. And you're focused on where you're going, correct? Yes. You're not looking back at Deontay to see what direction he's going, are you? No. Okay. You said you stayed at that house for a few minutes and then you went to your mom's boyfriend's house, is that right? Yes. That's Mr. Bell? Yes. All right. And you said you went and sat in his van for a little while, correct? Yes. All right. Did anyone come and talk to you while you were in the van? Sergio came out there. He came out there. Just a moment, please, Ron. And did you and Cedric speak? Yes. And did you tell Cedric that you'd gotten some money? Yeah, I told him we found some money. I have nothing else, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, so Yes, just briefly. Good, good morning, young man. Good morning to you, too. Okay, my name is Lillian Diallo. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you don't understand something <coughs> I've asked, please let me know and I'll do my best to clear it up, okay? Yes. Are you going to speak up for me just a little bit? Yes. I appreciate you. Now, this happens May 31st, correct? Okay. Well, if I said it was May 31st around 10 p.m., is that when you went to the store? I don't remember. That's fine. Thank you so much. And you see someone, you see a man out there, you said doing something, correct? And he dropped some money? Yes. Okay. You didn't see a female, did you? No. Okay. And when we say female, I'm going to point to the only female sitting at the table. Did you see this female out there that day? No. Thank you so much. I have not another question. And good morning to you, young man. Okay. I have no questions. Thank you. Can you read that right? Yes. Mr. Adams, when that uh, car pulled up in the parking lot and you saw defendant number one get out of it, did you look inside of that Impala to see who else was sitting inside? No. Were you paying attention to the Impala carefully at that time to try to figure out who was inside of it? No. Do you remember anything about the sound of the car or anything particular about the engine of the car when it came into the parking lot? It was it was bumpy, like, like it had a hole in the muff. Why do you say that? What did you hear to make you think that the car had a hole in the muffler? Because it was like, it pulled up like that. No other questions, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Adams. You are excused. And the deputy boy, you're excused, and then I'll allow if there are any additional questions. I do have one question for you, Mr. Adams. 
all of it happened after 10 o'clock at night, is that correct? What you just described on this record? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Where were your parents, sir? My mom was over my cousin's house. Okay. Any questions from the people? No just additional just one, questions? I'm sorry, just one moment, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Judge, is it okay if I go back and have him look at another exhibit? I know it's uh, a little bit out of the ordinary because it's re redirect, but I'd like him to look at one other exhibit to identify somebody. Well, I just, you ended your redirect, okay. and I asked one, two questions about did this happen at night, and where were his parents? And so if this exhibit has nothing to do with what I just asked, then I'm not going to allow it. Very good. Thank you, Judge. It has nothing to do with it? It doesn't have anything to do with okay. what you just asked. Thank you. Any questions on behalf of either of the defendants? None based on yours, Judge. Thank you. No, ma'am. No, Judge. Okay, thank you. Mr. Adams, you are excused. Yes, it's Mr. Bell, the officer in charge is bringing him from the hallway right now. Can we get a name? Cedric Bell. Cedric Bell. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, would you speak up and tell the judge your full first and last name, please? Uh, my name is Cedric Bell. Mr. Bell, did you know? Do you know a young man named Javion Adams? Yes, I do. What's your relationship to Mr. Adams? Stepdad. And did you know a person, a young man named Deontay Mitchell? Yes. What was your relationship to Mr. Mitchell back in May of 2016? Um, my stepson cousin. Uh, on May the 31st, uh, at some point, did you go to a party store called Nino's Party Store in Detroit? Yes, I did. Do you remember approximately when you were there? Uh, it was about 11.30 in the evening. Okay. Uh, may I approach the witness to Exhibit 13, Your Honor? Yes, you may. Everyone at the defense table has already had an opportunity to review. Yes, thank you, Judge. Okay, thank you. Sir, do you see yourself in that picture? Yes, sir. Tell and describe for us which person you are in that picture. I'm the gentleman with the shaven head and the lion green and black jacket. Thank you. And Judge, for the record, Exhibit 13 has a timestamp of 11.22 and 2 seconds on May 31st. Okay, thank you. So we know from the exhibit you were in the store at about 11.22 p.m.? Yes, sir. Would you tell the judge what you saw while you were inside of Nino's party store? Uh, Either inside or immediately outside of the store? Uh, basically, in the evening, I have one cigarette at night, and I venture to Nino's, and I got my cigarette. And as I left out of the store, I see this gentleman here pull up in a black car, pull a gun out, say, I'm tired of these young niggas out here. And he raised the gun and fired a shot off. And there was a lot of kids out, and they all scattered. And I ran across the street also myself. The person that fired that shot off, you were pointing across the courtroom saying, this person right here. Will you tell the judge what color clothes that person's wearing right now today? He has on the, all, what's that, yellow, or yellow, beige. What color is this? That's the, up to you, whatever color it appears to be. Yellow. Judge, the witness is pointing towards and describing the clothing of defendant one Gregory Walker. 
Hey, no objection. You make a sense. Where were you standing when you saw Defendant One fire that shot? Just outside the doors of Nino's. While you were present there, did you see your stepson, Javion, uh, in or near the store? No, I did not. Did you see Deontay Mitchell in or near the store at the time you were there? No, I did not. After you saw the man fire the shot and after you saw the kids on the bike scatter, did you, did you watch the man or did you watch where he went? Yes, I did. What did where did he go? Um, he made a right on the, uh, off of Buckingham onto Warren. Okay, let me ask a better question. I, I think I put you a little bit too far ahead. When I say where did he go, I mean immediately after firing the shot, did you see him get into a car? He was already in the car. So he was sitting in the car when he fired the shot? Yes. Was he in the driver's seat, passenger seat? Driver's seat. He was driving. At that time, could you tell if there was anyone else inside of the car? No, I could not. Do you, do you recall the description of the car? Yes, it was a black late model car. Black four-door, four door, I think it was. And so you see the car drive off? Yes. Where did it go? Uh, it went towards Alter Road. Do you know what street it, when it, when it left the parking lot of Nino's, do you know what street it turned on to or what street it was on immediately after leaving the parking lot? It was on Warren Avenue, headed down towards uh, Warren and Ultra Road. When you were at Nino's, did you drive a car there or did you walk there? I walked. So after the defendant, defendant number one, drove away, where did you go? I went home. Did you walk home? I walked home. How long did it take you to walk from Nino's back to your home? Three, four minutes. When you arrived at the house, did you go inside? No, I did not. What happened when you arrived back at your house? When I arrived at my home, I, I have a dog in the backyard, and he's usually a quiet dog unless someone is back there, and he was going crazy barking. So I go in the backyard where I have my van parked, and uh, I see the dog going off, and I look in the van, and I see J.B. on. And I open up the doors, and I see that he's nervous and sweating, and he had a few dollars in his hand, and I'm like, what didn't happen? So did you expect him to be able to have a, the, the money? Did, you, did it seem natural that he had the money in his hand hiding in the van there? Uh, he was actually sitting there in the van counting the money. And what did I, you say to him about the money? I was like, wherever you got that from, because you got problems and whoever it came from, they're going to come here because they know you live here. Either you take it back or you have to get out of this van and you have to go somewhere where his auntie live, sit there while I get your mother and we come over there and try to find out what's going on. Well, you, after you said all that to him, did anyone else come to your house? Yes. How much time passed between the conversation you had with Javion and when someone arrived at your house? No more than five minutes. So you've now been, it took, you said it took you four minutes to walk yes. from the store to your home. Yes. And how long do you think the conversation lasted with Javion? Mm, eight, nine minutes because uh, after I explained that you're in trouble, I don't know what's going on, we need to figure this out. He wanted to uh, go through the alleyway, jump over our neighbor's fence and cut through. And I was like, no, you can't do that because there were other problems going on on the street over. And I told him he had to go out the front. Did Javion stay there at your house or did he leave? He left. Did he leave before or after someone else arrived? Before. Tell us about when someone else arrived. Were they in a car? Yes, they were. Describe the car for us. It was the same black late model car that I saw this gentleman gentleman in. Um, after I talked to J.B. on, I went in the house and I closed the door. I wasn't in the house no more than two minutes, and I seen the lights pull up in the driveway. And the young lady, she came and knocked on my door. Okay, I'm going to stop you for a moment. When you said the same car you saw this gentleman in, Your Honor, he was pointing again at Defendant 1, Mr. Walker. Now you said a, a lady came to came to your door. Yes, this young lady in the middle, pointing she, towards and describing the seating position of defendant number two, Lillian Roberts, Your Honor. Okay, no objection. You may continue. When she came to your door, tell us exactly what happened. She, I answered the door. She asked, "Is Javion here?" I told her, "No, Javion doesn't be here." So she turns around to 
the first gentleman here in the states, he said that he's not here. Where was defendant one, Mr. Walker, where was he sitting when she told him that? He was sitting in the car and, and soon as he, soon as she told him this, he immediately bolted out of the car, had his pistol in his hand and was like, if Javion doesn't give me my money back, I'm going to put a bullet in him. I already got his friend in the back seat. And that's when I told him, I was like, let the kid go. Call the police, get your money back. Who did you say that to? To this first gentleman here. And that's Where was he? Was he in the car or out of the car? When he had got out of the car. And he was making his way around to the steps did towards me. Did you see what, where he was sitting in the car before he got out? He was driving. Did you see where defendant two, Miss Roberts, did you see her get out of the car? Yes, I did. What, what part of the car did she get out from? Front seat. Front seat passenger? Front seat passenger. Could you see into the back seat of that car? No, I could not. Could you tell if there were any people in the back seat of the car? Yes. I could see that there were a, a male and that there was a kid in there because he said he already told me that we have his friend. So I'm looking to see if I see his friend. And I'm like, well, JV and I do got a little friend like that, but I couldn't really actually see what kid it was back there. And that's when I was like, let the kid go, whoever was in the back seat with the kid, was hitting the kid, and that's when I was hollering, let that kid go, call the police and get your little money back. So the person in the back seat that was hitting the kid, could you tell the approximate age of that person? No, I could tell it was a, uh, it was a grown male. It was a man? Yes. Could you tell the skin color, the, anything else about the physical description of that no, man? No, I could not. I honestly could not. What part of the boy's body was he hitting describe for us the hitting what was it like well he was like hitting him on the head and you're using showing your left hand balled up like a fist yes is that the way the man was hitting the boy in the back seat yes you just couldn't see the faces of either of those two people no i could not i could see the swinging motion of him hitting me and so you because say you you tell him let the kid go Yes. What's their response? Did they? Did, well, did Judge, I'm going to object. Uh, Matthew's characterizing the testimony. I believe he said he told Mr. Walker to let the kid go. That was his testimony. Thank you. When you said let the kid go to Mr. Walker, did Mr. Walker respond? Did he say anything back to you? No, he did not. He just raised his pistol at me, and that's when I slammed the front door. Did um, defendant number two, Miss Roberts, did she? Did she? I'm sorry, Mr. Sermon. I, I don't know we if we need to break or what have you, okay. but I'm telling you that I'm struggling right now with Mr. Walker. He is continuously making facial gestures. He's laughing. He's rolling his eyes back to the back of his head. And, and I, I was a third grade teacher many, many years ago. I didn't allow kids to act that way. I'm certainly not going to allow you to act that way in my courtroom. The next time that I have to say something to you about your expressions and your gestures, you will be in a cell listening to this testimony over the intercom. You won't have the opportunity to see the people that are coming into this courtroom to testify. So, sir, I strongly suggest that you get your gestures together and stop altogether. I'm not oh, going God. to tolerate it. I'm not going to. You're I'm on. not. Would you give me a moment to speak with my client, please? Uh, yes. yes, and this might be a good time because he's pulling your client in. He's trying. Miss the oh, he's yes. trying. Oh, I'm and she's trying to, to not go with him. Okay. But just in case she's thinking about going, get her together I got for you. me. Okay, thank you. Let's go off the record. Let's take about two or three minutes. Sorry, Mr. Bell. I don't have a time out to put him in.
This is your next witness. Court is back in session. Remain seated. Remain quiet. Mr. Bell, before we broke, you were describing for us the places that different people were when the car arrived at your house, okay? And is it defendant one was the driver of the car? Correct. And defendant two, Miss Roberts, she got out of the passenger side? Yes, passenger front seat. And then there's the unknown adult striking the unknown child in the back seat? Yes, he was behind the driver, the driver's seat. Okay. Who was it exactly that said, that made the demand for money that was saying, I'll put a bullet in them if you don't give me the money back. Gregory. Yes. Where was Miss Roberts when Gregory said that to you? She was standing on my front porch. And at some point you then shut the door? Yes. Prior to shutting the door, did you get to see the people get back into the car and drive off? Or was it... When I closed the front door, my front door has like an oval glass in the center of it. A big oval glass. And as they jumped in the car and pulled off, I could stand there and watch them pull off. Did you see when they pulled off who was driving the car as they left that house? Yes, Gregory was driving. And where did defendant two go? What what seat in the car did she get into? 
She got back in the front passenger seat. After they drove off, did you ever see that car again? No, I did not. Had you seen Deontay after that? Uh, did you see Deontay Mitchell at all, at all that evening? Not at all that evening. At some point, did the police ask you to look at a lineup uh, and, and identify anybody? Yes. Uh, when I say lineup, what I really mean is a photo array, a group of, of pictures? Yes. All right. I want to uh, approach the witness with proposed exhibit number three, Your Honor. Yes, thank you, Judge. Okay, thank you. Sir, so that's proposed exhibit three. Have you seen that series of pictures before? Yes, I have. Okay, and when you, when you looked at those pictures, uh, what did the police officer ask you to do? They asked me to circle which one and an initial. Did you do that? Yes. And you circled one of the people's pictures there? Yes, and initial. Why did you circle and put your initials under that picture? To verify that this was my... This was my picking it. This, to verify that I picked this photo out and initialed it. And what did the person whose picture you circled, what did they do? This is the person that came to my home. This, hmm. The man that was driving the car? Yes, this is the man that was driving the car. Okay. Move to him at three, Your Honor. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Oh, it has nothing to do with me. Okay, thank you. No judge. Thank okay, you. thank you. Then it is admitted. Are you publishing, Mr. Sherman? Uh, I believe, with permission, it's on the screen already. That's mm -hmm. exhibit three for the court to okay. review. And I have the hard copy if the court would like that. Can I have yes, hard copy? certainly. I'll walk up there with that. I don't have any other questions for Mr. Bell. Thank you. Thank you. No problem, Judge. Okay, you may proceed. Thank you. Mr. Bell, good morning. Good morning. All right, Mr. Bell, I'm going to ask you a couple questions, and if I do a bad job asking them, let me know, and I'll do a better job, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Mr. Bell, you went to Nino's because you said you were looking for uh, your, your nightly cigarette, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And before you had gotten there, had you consumed any alcohol that evening? No, sir. Okay. Any marijuana, any other narcotics? No, sir. No, nothing like that. Okay. No, I'm a recovering. I'm in remission right now. I'm not supposed to have a cigarette, but I cheat and have my one cigarette. All right. Well, don't do that. Um, <laughs> Mr. Belt, when you said you walked to the store, correct? Correct. Short walk, correct? Correct. Right. And when you get there, um, has the Impala shown up yet or not? No. All right. Where are you when you become aware of this black vehicle? I'm outside the uh, store. All right. And do you remember, are you right next to the front door? Are you sort of off to the side? Could you tell the court where you are? Uh, I'm like about four steps outside the door. And you take notice of this vehicle and you see the door open, correct? The door did not open. No. Okay. What do you see in relation to that vehicle at that time? Anything else? I see the vehicle pull up and I see... The gentleman here holding a uh, pistol outside the vehicle, and that's when he made his statement about he's tired of these young niggas doing whatever they did to him. And you said, correct me if I'm wrong, you said he fired a shot, is that right? Yes, he did. All right. And did he, he lifted the gun in the air and fired a shot, or where did he point he the gun? Lifted in the air and fired a shot. All right. Now, at that point, you... It sounds like it sounds like you ran. Is that right? Correct. All right. When the person gets out of the vehicle, okay, he makes the statement. Is he in the vehicle or out of the vehicle at that? He company? never got out the vehicle at the store right. uh, when I saw him. All right. Let me ask you this: When the vehicle pulls up, okay, is are you near to the passenger side or the driver side? Driver side. And this person, does the window up or down? The driver side window. It's all the way down. All right and you hear him make the statement and he then does what exactly if you could just explain it for me please after he makes his statement he raises the gun he let a shot shot off and that must have been very startling i would imagine correct correct all right 
and that's something that would stick out in your mind. Is that right? Someone firing a shot, you're very close to that. Is that right? Correct. And you spoke with the police a number of times about this, about what you saw that night. Is that fair? Fair enough. All right. And you would have told them that this person put their hand out in the air and fired a shot. Is that right? Yes, which I did. Okay. At that point, you said you take off and you run. Do you run back to your home? No, I run across. I'm on one side of Warren Avenue. I run to the other side of Warren. By the time, you know, I don't move too swiftly anymore. By the time I make it across the street, he done made the right turn and he's shooting up Warren. I say to myself, okay, bad guy gone. Well, hold on, I'm, I'm going to stop you for a second. So you get across the street, correct, to what you perceive as safety. Is that fair? Fair enough. All right. And by that time, you turn around, and the vehicle is already driving away, this black and I didn't have to turn around. As I was running across the street, he made a right turn and went up Warren Avenue. Now, you say he. When you're across the street, do you see the vehicle going away? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you see who's driving the vehicle from where you're standing? Yes, because he had to uh, make his right turn past me. And... As Mr. Surma asked, you don't see the vehicle again, is that correct? Not until they come back to my residence. All right. And, and thank you. I apologize. Sorry, I jumped forward there. So a few minutes later, you go home, and you said the vehicle actually pulls up in your driveway. Is that right? Correct. All right. It doesn't pull up on the street a few houses down, correct? No. All right. Right up in your driveway? Right up in my driveway. Right. And when the vehicle pulls up, you're already in your house or you're outside? Tell me what I'm happened. in my house. All right. So do you actually see the vehicle pull up in the driveway? Yes. You're sitting in a front room looking out a window? No, I never had a chance to sit, in, sit down. I had just walked into the house, and I walked to the table, my dining room table, and I see the light pull up. I see the car pull in the driveway, and I see the lights. And uh, two minutes, seconds later, she was at the door knocking at the door. Right. Now, that's after you spoke with Javion, correct? Correct. All right. And you said that when you saw him in the van, he appeared nervous and sweating. Is that a fair representation of how he appeared? Yes. You said that Ms. Roberts was knocking on your door and you opened the door. Is that right? Correct. Right. And from where you're standing, you're in your front door. Do you have a, a porch of any kind? small porch. All right. Is it cement or is it wood? Cement. Right. And it's one or two steps down, is that fair? One step down. Well, two steps. Right. Off the porch, then the step, then to the ground. Now the vehicle, you said the vehicle's parked in your driveway, is that right? Correct. And how far away would you say is that vehicle from where you're standing in your doorway? Hmm. Let me see. I'm standing in my doorway. And let, let me do this, Judge, if I may. Mr. Mr. Bell, would you say it's as far away as you and I are right now or closer? Or mm -hmm. farther? About this is just maybe a little closer. Okay. So 25? Less than that. 15. So, so, so Judge, Mr. Kessel standing uh, at the far end of your courtroom where I believe you have marked off 15. 16 feet oh. from the witness chair. I'm sorry, you said 15 feet? Mm -hmm. On the blue tape. Right. 19. Oh. 19. That's, that works. I was close. Okay. So they're about 19 feet away. Is that about right? That distance you and I? Than, it was closer than that. You thought it was it closer than you and I 19 just 19 feet, that's kind of from me standing on my porch to my driveway. It's no more than 15 feet. It's okay. It's short. It's a short distance. It was a very short distance. I've got you. Now, do you have any porch lights on the front of your home? Yes, I do. Are, is that a porch light that's separate from your home, or is it attached to your home? It's attached to the home. All right. And was that porch light on when that vehicle pulled up? No, it was not. All right. And are there any street lights out in front of your home? Yes. All right. Directly um, on the, if I'm facing this way, it's right here on the left-hand side, not even 12 feet, a foot away. It's right on the corner of the driveway, the street light is. And it lights up my whole driveway, the whole front of the house. Thank you. And when this person's knocking on your door and she says, she asks you a question, is that right? 
Correct. Right. And at that point, you're focused on her and not the vehicle. Is that fair? Fair. All right. And you said at some point, a gentleman gets out of the vehicle. Is that right? Correct. And there, and please remind me, are they on the passenger side or the driver's side? They're on the driver's side. All right. And the person stands up, and at that point, you said they're armed. Is that correct? Correct. All right. And that person makes a statement, correct? Correct. Now, they got out of your, your, as sure as you're standing here and looking at me, you're sure that person got out of that vehicle, correct? Correct. They didn't jump out from behind a bush or anything like that? No, sir. No, you would never have told anyone that because that's not true, right? That's not true. Thank you. The vehicle inside the vehicle you when the prosecutor is asking you questions you said it was kind of dark inside the vehicle the is vehicle that, inside the vehicle i'm sorry and see that's what i mean when i say correct me if you're asking a bad question inside of the vehicle when the prosecutor was asking you questions you said it was kind of dark in the vehicle is that right correct you couldn't really see who was in the vehicle is that fair uh i couldn't see who was in the back seat because it was a late model car and the windows was dirty the whole car was dirty so you basically couldn't see what in what adult was and what child was in the back seat, but you could see a child and an adult in the back seat of the car. Both individuals were in the back seat. Correct. All right. And so now let me think of a good way to ask this question. When you're looking at this vehicle, all right, the vehicle is to your right or to your left? It would be to my left. Okay. And as you're looking at this vehicle, is the adult on the back passenger or the pack back driver side? I'm sorry, yeah, back passenger or back driver. You're talking about the individual that was in the back seat? Yeah, you, you said there was an they adult. They was behind the driver. Okay, so the adult was in the back driver side, correct? Correct. Right. And so that would have been, that person would have been closer to you as opposed to the person in the back passenger seat, correct? Correct. And you said you couldn't identify anybody inside the vehicle. Is that fair? No, I could not identify the two individuals in the back seat. Thank you, and, th and that's what I meant. You couldn't identify the two individuals in the back. Correct. Just one moment, please, Your Honor. I have nothing else, Your Honor. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Bell. Good morning. My name is Lillian Diallo. I'm going to ask you some questions. Your you name is? Lillian Diallo. Lillian? You can call me Ms. Diallo. Is that okay? Mr. Bell? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, if you don't understand something I've asked, please let me know, and I'll do my best to clear it up, okay? Is that fair? Yes, ma'am. Now, you talk to the police at the 5th Precinct after this incident occurs, don't you? Yes. And you talk to them as well at your home after this incident occurs, correct? Yes. Or did you? Yes. Okay. All right. And when you talk to the police, you want to give them the best information possible so that you could help in their investigation, correct? Correct. You would tell them everything that was that happened during that time trying to find Mr. Mitchell, correct? Correct. All right. Now, you indicated that Ms. Roberts, who's my client, she comes to the door and you hear a knock, correct? Correct. All right. And she, she asked you a question, correct? Correct. And after that, someone else stepped in, correct? Correct. Uh, Ms. Roberts did not have a weapon, correct? No, she did not. Okay. Now, did you ever tell the police, and your times might be a little off, but that at approximately 10 p.m. you were at Nino's party store? It was after 10. Okay. But you told them you were there at whatever time. If it says 10, it might be a mistake, correct? Correct. All right. And then did you ever tell them there were about 20 um, kids at the store being loud and boisterous? Yes. Okay. And you, at no time did you see 
uh, Mr. Mitchell, the young man, being put into a vehicle, did you, sir? No, I had Okay. Now, did you tell the police that it took you about 10 minutes to walk from the store to your home? No, I would never tell no one that because from Nino's to my home, it's always been three to four minutes, if that long. Okay. So you indicated that you uh, move a little slower now, correct? Correct. And I'm not making it light of it. I do too. But it, so you weren't running home, were you? No, I wasn't. So you walked home, correct? Correct. Because at that time you did not know that there was any issue or problem, correct? Correct. Okay. So you walked to your house, um, and how long do you think it took you to get from the store to your home? Three to four minutes. Okay. So three to four minutes. Do you go in the house or do you immediately go to the van? I go to the back of the house because my dog is barking okay. and going crazy and making a lot of noise, so I go back there. Okay, so when you walk to your home, you hear the dog, and then you go to the backyard, correct? Correct. All right, and when you go to your yard, you go to the van? Yes. Okay, and do you, you open the door to the van, correct? Correct. And once you open the door to the van, you see a young man who you've identified as Mr. Adams counting money, correct? Correct. And you said that this doesn't look right, whatever you've done, uh, it shouldn't be over here, or you should do the right thing, correct? Correct. All right. And you indicated that you talked to the young man, uh, Mr. Adams, for about eight minutes, correct? About that month. Okay. Eight to nine minutes, somewhere along there, correct? Correct. All right. So... So if it takes you three, we're going to say three minutes to walk home, and then another eight minutes where you talk to Mr. Adams, that's about 11 minutes later, then what happens? Uh, I come, <coughs> I get the dog quiet. Okay. How long did it take you to get the dog quiet? A couple of seconds. Okay. Just and a rub what? on the head. Hey, okay. boy, good boy. Okay, thank you. And then what happens? And then I go in the house. And I wasn't in the house two minutes when I see the lights of the car pull okay. up in the driveway. Okay, you, so you go in the house about, you said about two minutes, you see two some minutes. lights, correct? Correct. And at that point in time, do you see who you've identified as Miss Roberts walk to your door and knock? Yes. Okay, so you saw her do that? Yes. Okay, she didn't kick your door in or anything, did no, she? No, ma'am. Okay, not like normal people knock? Yes. Okay. Alright. And at no time did you ever see Miss Roberts do anything to this, who you thought was a young person inside the vehicle? No, I did not. Okay. Mr. Bell, I don't have any other questions for you, and condolences to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Daly. I have no questions. No, thank you. Okay. Any redirect? No redirect. Mm -hmm. The store, we've already went over this, the Nino store, that's in the city of Detroit, is that right? Yes. And then your house, which is a short four-minute walk from there, is that also in the city of Detroit? Yes. No other questions, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bell. You are excused. Thank you. Deputies will tell you how to leave the courtroom. Our next witness is Mr. Reed. John Reed. John. Okay. Do you know, is this a brief witness? We're breaking at 12.15 for lunch. Then we need to expeditiously clear my courtroom, and then we will reconvene at 1.30. I can't promise that I'll be done with by 12.15, but I think it's worth starting. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 